So, uh, thank you uh, for coming here and uh, hello to all of you from uh, Istanbul. Uh, so today um, I will talk about adsorption chillers uh, systems in general. Uh, however, in particular, I will give information about the GD adsorption chiller developed by IDD, uh, of which I am one of the uh, founder of the uh, company. So um, let me start my presentation with the introduction. Uh, our world is getting polluted, you know, and many agreements such as Paris Agreement are made in order to save our world a little bit more from the harm of human beings, so uh, from us. So we are looking at how much we can reduce our carbon footprint print However, the most important problem today is that the energy, and it's expensive, and energy efficiency has therefore um, became important. So many st studies are being carried out to reduce the use of electricity, and we're always uh, focusing on these issues within the scope of the Annex 80. So let's look at firstly the refrigeration systems because the absorption chiller is a kind of uh, refrigeration system even you can use it uh, in a heating mode but today I want to focus on the refrigeration uh, benefit of the absorption chiller. So refrigeration systems can be divided into two groups mechanically driven and the thermally driven ones. Uh, so, uh, if you are using electricity to uh, cool down somewhere, if you, for example, if you are having an HVAC system and if you are using uh, electricity, so that we are calling it is a mechanical driven refrigeration system. But on the other side, if you are giving uh, not electricity but also the waste heat or heat to uh, to an uh, third source to your system. So we are calling it thermally driven refrigeration system. So basically two um, refrigeration systems that can be thermally driven, adsorption and absorption systems, refrigeration systems. But today I will focus on adsorption systems, which are my uh, research area. So, as I said, uh, we developed GD, we call it GD, it's our uh, innovative absorption chiller uh, with, due to its innovative design. So, uh, we are getting, uh, we are using the waste heat to cool down the, uh, to, to cool down uh, somewhere, wherever you need to cool down. So it is using water as a coolant. Uh, I mean, it's the refrigerant or it's, it's just the water. We are not using such a kind of harm, uh, harmless uh, R134A or something like that inside of it. So it's just the water. So adsorbers uh, is filled with the uh, silica gel, which is an environmental friendly material. So with, that, with, with its casing, we have two ingredients, silica gel and water. So silica gel is the silicium based uh, material, so you can even eat it. So therefore, absorption GD, absorption chiller, is a completely green cooling system. So here is the working principle of the absorption chiller, is the general one. As I said, uh, four main components of the um, refrigeration systems we have, condenser, evaporator, a, a compressor, and an expansion valve. But uh, here we, instead of the compressor, we have absorbers. We have two absorbers here. Uh, they're working simultaneously. And the third input to uh, have a chilled water is not the electricity here, it's the waste heat. The waste heat, where, for example, from geothermal plant, from, from a solar plant, or from, uh, where, from a chimney, wherever uh, you can get the waste heat. So uh, we can, uh, due to, uh, thanks to the physical phenomena with the water and the silica gel uh, between each other, so we are generating cheap water, so we can, you can use it uh, wherever you want. So GD uh, is developed uh, by my team uh, in IDD's labs, so uh, which can convert waste heat from plants into cheap water, as I said. 
And this produced chip water can be used for your cooling processes where you need a cooling uh, needs. So GD consumes only as much electricity as a light bulb because we are just using the electricity for the PLC control systems, that's all. We don't need any electricity to have a chip water uh, from that system. So uh, as I said, it's just uh, using water and the silica gel and it's completely environmental friendly without no carbon dioxide emissions. And if you have waste heat, uh, water, around 70 to 105 degrees Celsius to, as a waste heat. So we are just taking it and we're using it inside of our absorbers and we are generating chip water to you. So here is the other absorption chillers in the market. Um, here is the uh, photo of them. Uh, the left hand side is from America. Uh, it's not in the market anymore. I have not seen it. Uh, so uh, here is the, it's developed for the district, uh, small villas, let's, let's say, small houses. It's not in the market right now. It's not working properly. The right hand side is uh, from India. It's working, uh, but it, it is just working for the constant temperatures and if you have such a kind of specific mass flow rates. So that's why the application of these absorption chillers is so limited right now. But after GD, I guess everything will change. So um, our difference is, as I said, uh, we have an innovative absorber design. So as I said, the condenser, we have a condenser, evaporator and the uh, absorption absor absorbers, two absorbers. But we removed the condenser and placed it inside of the absorbers. So thanks to that new design, uh, it, we reduce its size and its weight. So it has better functionality right now. And as I said, uh, the most important difference is the adaptation to different temperatures and flow rates. Because the, we are the inventor of this GD and we can uh, manage and we can do it, uh, we can also adapt it to your system to take the more uh, performance from your system. So as I said, uh, here it's the commonly used absorption, chill absorption chillers. They have condenser. We removed that condenser and we embedded it inside of the absorbers. So that's why the weight and the size of the GD is reduced. So uh, let's look at the uh, applications areas of the absorption chillers as well as the GD uh, for main uh, plants that we can, six main plants that we can uh, talk about, food and beverage facilities, casting plants, power plants, solar power plants, cooling chimneys, and chemical process plant. Or wherever you, you have any waste heat, if you need any cooling, uh, uh, cooling from that, uh, and if you have any waste it, so you can use it uh, in your, uh, you can use the GD. So uh, the advantage of the absorption chiller is the maintenance free uh, because it has no vibrational uh, components. Uh, that's why the uh, maintenance cost is so low and it has a lifespan of more than uh, 25 years. Uh, as I said, we are using the electricity just for the PLC control of the system. Uh, due to lack of the moving components, it works without noise and vibration. Even I said, it's if, if you have 70 to 105 degrees Celsius water as a waste heat, uh, we can use it. But if uh, this temperature reduces to 50 degrees Celsius, it will not uh, stop itself. itself. It will it uh, it continue to uh, work properly, but uh, in a slow slow manner. So uh, as I said, it using water uh, and silica gel is totally environmental friendly and complies with the Paris Agreement. Uh, it has an innovative co uh, condenser embedded absorber design, and it's the lightest and the smallest size absorption cooling system on the market right now. So. 
also it has uh, disadvantages. Many of these absorption chillers has disadvantages. It requires high technology and specific design to provide high vacuum. Due to the high vacuum, you need to be very careful and you need uh, high technology uh, for, to produce uh, this kind of absorption chiller. But uh, we achieved this one from the GD, so it's not a problem for our uh, product. So it has a large volume of light compared to the traditional um, traditional mechanical heat pump system. Uh, so as I said, we have an innovative absorber uh, right now and we reduced the uh, size of itself due to the embedded condenser inside of an absorb absorber. So it's not a problem for us. And also, as you may you know, these performance of these systems could be uh, could be assumed so low for you when you compare it with the HVAC systems. But right here, as you know from the uh, definition of the COP, it's the benefit over consumed. So the benefit is the limitless here because you're wasting your heat, but we are using it. So I, I know uh, the, um, the, uh, the COP values, it seems to you so low for the application but the, we are just using the uh, energy that you're just wasting it. That's why uh, it's not, these kinds of system is not, uh, the, these kinds of issues like the low COP values is not an issue for us. And also it's the, the GD has the highest COP performance in the market right now due to its uh, innovative absorber design. So, um, you may know the absorption system uh, more than the absorption one. Uh, you can be confused about the terminology. Uh, we are just focusing the absorption here. But you, may, you, uh, you are using absorption systems in your um, system. Uh, but when we compared all of these ones, for example, the lifespan is more than 20 years for the absorptions. But due to the corrosive uh, one, due to the corrosive issues in the absorption chiller, you have to change your absorption chiller uh, from seven to nine years. So it has high maintenance costs, uh, but on the other hand, absorption has the low maintenance cost. So uh, as a desiccant, we are using a silica gel. Uh, in our system, it's an innovative silica gel. We innovated it. But uh, on the other side, uh, the lithium bromide, uh, it's commonly used in the absorption chiller system, which is highly corrosive. That's why you have to change your absorption chiller um, between not more than 10 years. So you can remove it with a new one. And also the, um, as I said, it can work on uh, not, not uh, over 50 degrees Celsius. Uh, it will not stop but it shuts down 82 degrees if you are comparing with the absorption chiller. So uh, here is the field works that we've done uh, with my colleagues, um, the GD. So we ran GD as if um, it was connected to a system and looked at how it would react in many systems. So uh, many uh, performance tests test, uh, were done so we achieved to get the GD right now. So uh, as an annex solution, how we can use GD as a solution on resilient cooling? So let's look at it. For example, if you have a district heating system and also a heating center, uh, you're generating heat. So if you give that heat to GD, you can cool down your district area. Uh, so. Uh, with the use of the absorption chiller, you can convert it to a uh, cold water, chilled water. So you can use this uh, cold chilled water uh, in your uh, district area. And also, if you have any heat source such as geothermal or solar panels or PV PVT panels, then they are generating his heat, you know, and if you uh, give it to GD, it will produce cooling and you can use it uh, in your district area again. Also, uh, well, how we can apply this system to our solar panels because we have lots of um, solar panels on our buildings 
And so if the temperature of the solar panels, PVT panels or PV panels, the surface temperature increases, uh, the producing of the electricity uh, will be reduced. So you have to cool down the surface temperature of the PVT panels. So you're giving money, you're uh, wasting electricity to cool down the PVT panel to take more electricity from it, but you're also wasting some of your electricity in, uh, from uh, for your HVAC systems to cool down the PVT systems. But right here, if you're using the absorption chillers, uh, you you should not uh, you will not pay electricity to cool down the PVT panel surface temperatures. Then uh, it will be your uh, and then you will get more efficiency from your PVT panel. And how I know it because we published a paper uh, with my colleagues from Italy. So uh, we looked at if we use absorption chiller uh, instead of vapor compression system, the commonly used HVAC, healing, ventilating, air conditioning systems. So uh, with the greatest power demands on busy day, PVT plus the absorption chiller provides the highest electrical efficiency and contributes to reducing the risk of power outages. And it is comparable uh, with the using of the absorption chiller to cool down the PVT panel to increase its efficiency uh, with the vapor compression system, the commonly used uh, electric used VCC systems. So instead of the paying uh, electricity and uh, for the electricity, you can use the absorption chillers to cool down the PVT panel surface temperature. So uh, here is the examples of other applications areas of the absorption chillers. Uh, for example, if you have a base station from Vodafone or somewhere, uh, so uh, as you know, uh, you have to you have to collect the electricity for the for the uh, for the uh, for, for them. So uh, what we should do, we are locating the batteries inside of these cabinets and it's generating and it's giving electricity to the system and then they're giving signals to us. But right here, uh, you, we are paying money and also the electricity uh, to cool down this cabinet because if you are taking the current from the batteries, the batteries is, uh, temperature is increasing. So that's why you have to cool all, the, all of these batteries down. So um, then we can use the GD uh, to cool down the, these uh, battery uh, systems, let's say. Also, uh, the other application areas that cool uh, painting booths, uh, like the uh, if you are producing vehicles, uh, you are using the furnaces uh, for spraying the uh, and also have some painting uh, on the uh, surface of the vehicle. Uh, so um, we can get the uh, wasted of the furnace uh, from the chimney. And also, we can uh, use the uh, cooling, the, the chilled water uh, to cool down the booth baths. So because they are just uh, using some baths to cool down the parts, uh, so uh, they're wasting money and also they're, produ they're giving, elect uh, they're also wasting electricity and paying lots of money for this procedure. And also the cooling towers and chimneys could be um, supported by the GD, so we can increase the, temp uh, the performance of these cooling chimneys and cooling towers by using the, the GD, so uh, you will not give any kind of um, electricity, you will not pay for it, you will just need only a waste heat to uh, generate uh, chilled water from the GD. So uh, I don't know if we have time, uh, but there is a link to a very short uh, 20, 30 minutes um, video for how it works right here. May you can use this link and the IDD's uh, YouTube channel. Then if we have time, I guess we have time. So, so we, still, we still need the question and answer session. Sorry. So, um, could you paste uh, the link into the into the 
Yes, sure. So you can also watch this one and it will give brief information about how the uh, absorption chillers can be applied to an industry. So generally prudent oops. hot water or unnecessary. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you very much.